Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we have another tier list video. Today we're going to be ranking functional groups based on how good they smell. The best smelling chemicals are definitely going to go in S tier, and the worst smelling chemicals are going to go in lower tiers. So the functional groups that we're going to be ranking are either ones that are common or ones that I've worked with and I am like the expert on. So if I say one of these smells good and it's obscure, you know I'm right, because I am the one who works with these, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. So there's certain functional groups which anyone who smelled will know that they're good. So some examples of this would be like uh, benzaldehydes. So benzaldehydes just always smell good. If you've ever smelled uh, vanillin, vanillin smells good. There's also artificial almond flavor, benzaldehyde. It's such a good smelling compound. I think benzaldehydes have to go in S tier. Benzaldehydes just smell so, so good. Now there's other compounds which lots of people will smell that also smell good. So alcohols would be among them. So if you like alcohols such as phenyl ethanol or phenyl propanol, phenyl ethanol is like the smell of roses. If you ever smell like a rose, the exact smell that you smell is usually phenyl ethanol. They have really good smells. Now occasionally alcohols won't have good smells. And so some examples of alcohols that smell really bad would include like butenol, pentenol, really unpleasant smells. But for the most part, alcohols tend to smell decent. I mean, if you think about like rubbing alcohol or drinking alcohol or methanol, they kind of have like not as good of a smell. So I think best case scenario, alcohols would go in A tier, but there are enough examples where they don't smell too, too good. Now, personally, I think a lot of the alcohols, especially the small molecule ones, smell pretty good. It's just once we get to like ethanol or isopropanol, they're like not too good anymore. So because some of them are not as good smelling, we're going to have to put this in A tier, which makes sense because it's an alcohol. Okay, so now let's go to maybe one of the bad ones. So thioketones. If you've never heard about thioketones before, thioketones are among the most notorious chemicals in organic chemistry. Why? Because thioacetone, for instance, is a chemical that smells so bad that when people have intentionally prepared it before, people several miles away have allegedly been able to smell it, and the smells have lasted for quite a while for the person who had been working with it. So there's some really good horror stories about thioacetone that other people have covered on YouTube before. Uh, I have accidentally made a small amount of thioacetone once when I was trying to dissolve the trimer of thioformaldehyde using nitric acid and acetone, and I quickly realized why that was a bad idea. So just like a really unpleasant, penetrating odor that just kind of destroys your nostrils and makes you want to be as far away from it as possible. Thioketones absolutely are going to go into F tier. Now here we have chicken feet and the reason we called this chicken feet is people couldn't agree on what to call it because there wasn't like a good clean sounding name such as like tert butanes. It just kind of sounded weird so we went with chicken feet because that's what it looks like. If you've never played chicken foot it's a really great domino game. It's a lot of fun. And terpetal compounds in general, while uh, we're calling them feet here, do not smell like feet. They smell amazing. So they usually have a, a wintry, evergreen type odor that's usually sweet. This is evocative of TBS chloride, of terpetal methyl ether, um, as well as terpetylated arenes. Just a very, very nice smelling motif in general. So I think terpetal has to go into S tier. Now we have many other functional groups here, so let's try and get through them. So aryl nitriles, also known as benzonitriles, are usually smell quite almondy. However, it's got like a little bit of a twang of like, you shouldn't be smelling me, I'm probably bad for you. And so best case scenario, I think this would probably go in B tier. When you smell them, it's not like this is the best thing ever. It's like, wow, that sure smells like almonds. That sure has an almond smell, but it's kind of like a little bit suffocating and nauseating. So I think aryl nitriles have to go in C tier. If you disagree with me, make sure you let me know down below in the comments. Now, azides. I have not, well, I actually have made azides a couple times, but I never got the opportunity to smell them. But from people in the Discord who've made azides before, they said that it smelled absolutely like death and like you're going to get cancer. And, you know, that's pretty bad. So despite azides starting with an A, we're going to have to put them in F tier as well. Isonitriles. I briefly talked about isonitriles in a previous video where I was talking about the worst smelling molecules that I've ever made. So isonitriles uh, are unique. They have their own breed of bad. They smell very unpleasant. They, they kind of have this like plasticky odor, but like also nauseating and just like a very vigorous, unpleasant smell. If you've never smelled an isonitrile and you have the opportunity to do so, I'd recommend you do so in a very, very small amount uh, if you feel it's safe to do so. Okay, now 
while there are a number of other ones here, which uh, we are going to have to go through and you might think smell bad, some of them actually don't smell that bad. So let's talk about thionobenzoates. So thionobenzoates are a type of thionoester where we have a benzene ring or a heteroaromatic ring. Also, full disclosure, anytime I say aryl here, it's safe to assume heteroaryl, but if I wrote het slash ar, it would just be a lot bigger, so we're just simplifying it to aryl. Thionobenzoates smell usually sweet, not like as nice as esters. They, they definitely aren't everybody's cup of tea. Some people I've talked to aren't fans, but for me, I get nostalgic about the smell of thionoesters, probably because I've worked with them for so long. They aren't necessarily pleasant, but they aren't really unpleasant either. And I'd say amongst sulfur compounds, they're one of the like more neutral smelling ones. So for that reason, I'm gonna put thionobenzoates in C tier. Now, if we talk about thiobenzophenones, they're kind of like thioketones, except uh, in this case, we have an aryl group uh, adjacent to the thiocarbonyl. Now, these smell really bad. Like, I've I've made three or four aryl thiobenzophenone type things, or uh, thiophenones in general, and I would say that they smell absolutely terrible. So this should just say thiophenone, because a benzophenone would mean that there's one on both sides. So thiophenones smell like burning fruity skunks and they are just the worst ever and you want to get away from them as much as possible uh i mean like when you smell them they're interesting like they have a really interesting smell but it's a bad interesting so for that reason i think thiobenzophenones are gonna have to go in e tier okay now another sulfur compound that's surprisingly good smelling is trifluoromethyl sulfides so scf3 groups and so i've made several analogs of benzyl scf3 you might say that the good smell is due to the presence of a benzyl group. Benzyl groups tend to be good smelling as well. But these are like fruity and amazing and like it smells like wow. Like you smell it and you go wow. It's got like this slight mintiness to it. But it's just like very pleasant. Like super duper pleasant. I would even go as far as saying it's just in general an S tier smell. And because it has a sulfur in it I mean that makes sense. Now benzylic alcohols are also really good smelling motifs and when I think of benzyl alcohols I just think of like flowers because a lot of flowers make various benzyl alcohols and sometimes some of them smell like play-doh as well in a good way not in a bad way. I would say benzylic alcohols are, are nice to have around. They can be a little bit suffocating if you're smelling one of the ones that you shouldn't smell too much like if they have some toxicity but they're really good smelling compounds. Now I wouldn't say that they're like the best ever but they at least have to be somewhere between B and S tier. But because they start with a B, we're going to put them in B tier. Now, ethers. Ethers generally tend to smell good. I personally like the smell of ether, diethyl ether, terpetyl methyl ether, and as well as like dimethyl ether, you know, the smell of hairspray. They're, they're nostalgic. Maybe they're not good exactly, but they are nostalgic. So diethyl ether, if you smell a little bit too much of it, it stops being a good smell and it starts being like, uh, like heartburn, spicy, unpleasant but it, I like it in small amounts. It's a, it's a nice odor to have in the lab, but some people are really offended by it. Because my opinion isn't the only one that matters here and people are kind of on the fence about it, I'm gonna put ethers in D tier. You can comment down below if you disagree. Okay, so alkyl nitriles, which I've just simplified to nitriles here. Now, in my opinion, small molecule nitriles don't have as much of a smell to me. Uh, I know some people think that it smells like acetic acid, uh, I personally don't think that they have too much smell. Uh, I've worked with acetonitrile tons and tons, and for whatever reason, I just can't seem to smell nitriles. Uh, for this reason, I'm going to put nitriles in D tier because they're fairly neutral. If you like the smell of nitriles, make sure you comment down below. Now, dimethyl anilines, you might think all amines are bad smelling. I hate amines. However, if we talk about anilines, once they're substituted, they actually smell pretty good. They're kind of like anisole, but instead of an oxygen, just the nitrogen analog. So I've made some ester derivatives of anilines before that smell incredible. Like, like you wouldn't even know that there's a nitrogen on that molecule because of how good it smells. Uh, absolutely great smelling molecules. I would say that because I don't have a big enough data set to compare this to, I'd be reluctant to rank this too high. I've also worked with NN dimethyl aniline before, and that wasn't exactly a great smelling motif on its own, but in the right context, I think these things can smell really good. But because there's not as not there's not enough precedent, I think we're gonna have to put them in C tier. Now, phenones, like acetophenone, propiophenone. Now, acetophenone to me is like the smell of new shoes. If you ever get like a new pair of shoes, they have that new shoe smell. It's some sort of weird plasticky smell that I would associate with acetophenone or some related phenone. So it's not exactly a good smell, but it's not exactly a bad smell either. 
it's it's the kind of thing that you go, oh, that's 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 interesting. You don't smell that too often. And so I think for that reason, I'd probably put it in C tier as well. You wouldn't exactly want to have it around all the time, uh, but you know, it's not not the worst to have. Now, alkyl aldehydes, aliphatic aldehydes are a mixed bag. Some people really like the smells of aldehydes, but it's also like the smell of old people smell. So there's certain cheeses like goat cheeses, which have a really strong odor that people don't like. Some people do like that's associated with aldehydes. But in general, I would say aldehydes tend to have the smell of like uh, rotten, gone bad. You don't really want to smell them. And because most of the time when you smell that isn't in a food context, I would say it's less pleasant. But, you know, we don't want to be too harsh on the old people. So we'll put it in D tier. Okay, so similar to the sulfides, we have trifluoromethyl selenides. And so these are another one which you look at the selenium and think this is going to be one of the worst smelling things ever. But man, the... S S E C F three group smells really good. It's almost as good as the trifluoromethyl sulfides. However, it has something else going on. I, I would say it smells a little bit like benzyl selenocyanates or just selenocyanate itself, like potassium selenocyanate. It has this like, uh, how would I even compare it? It's kind of like uh, some Asian sesame flavor. It's got a slight sesame undertone, but this one was cooler and mintier than the S C F three one. And so this is a really interesting smell. I don't know if this is just dependent on the ones that I've smelled before, but I think it smells incredible. Easy, easy A tier. Okay, so alkyl thionoesters. While we were talking about uh, thionobenzoates before, alkyl thionoesters have a bit of their own thing going on as well. So I would say that alkyl thionoesters tend to have more of an oniony, garlicky smell. Not like good enough that you'd want to eat it, but you know, not not bad. I personally like the flavor of garlic and onion, so it never bothered me too much, but it, it kind of felt like a, a Trojan horse. Like, it's like, you could tell it's not like a real garlic smell, but it's not like the worst thing ever. So for that reason, I think thionoesters have to go in D tier. Now, dithioesters are similar, but worse. They smell kind of like nauseating. They smell like onion, but like there's something wrong about it. There's, there's something going on that's not quite good. It's a little bit sickening, but sometimes they have a bit of an onion twang to them. So dithioesters are not that pleasant. I think they better go in D tier as well. I mean, it's not very fair that we're putting thionoesters in D tier if we're going to put dithioesters in D tier. So I think we can put thionoesters in C tier. Um, you could, you might disagree with me. And because I am anticipating a lot of negative comments, I will just uh, cave and put them like this. Okay. Thioether sulfides, right into F tier. If you've ever smelled rotting vegetables, rotting broccoli, rotting cabbage, that is the smell of dimethyl sulfide, and it sucks. I hate the smell of thioethers, almost as a rule. There are exceptions, but for the most part, they are terrible. So it's interesting. You go from a methyl group to a CF3 group, you go from one of the worst smelling things ever to, wow, that's actually like the best ever. So, you know, we have quite a dichotomy here in terms of the effect of fluorine on smells. Now, speaking of fluorine, let's go through difluorobenzodioxals. So I made a series of these in one of my papers that we published in JOC. I can include a reference to that in the description if you're interested. I'll make a video on it at some point. These things tend to smell quite good. They're really volatile, so they, they're quite fragrant in most cases. Um, most of the time they were really, really pleasant odors, but occasionally there was a couple that were like hit and miss because there was a couple that weren't as good. And because it starts with a B for benzodioxal, I think we're going to have to put them in B tier. Okay. Benzoates. Alkyl benzoates would be usually what come to mind for me. I think of like methyl benzoate, ethyl benzoate related ones, and, uh, they all smell really good. I've made, uh, I've, uh, worked with analogs of methyl benzoate, such as like uh, N-methylpyrazole, uh, methyl carboxylate, thiophene carboxylate derivatives, furan carboxylate derivatives, and they all smell almost identical as their methyl ester forms. They do have slight nuances, and when I've got different undergrads to participate in a uh, A-B testing sort of thing, there's quite different results between people. They're, they're like, there's a lot of difference in uh, smell receptors that can be easily measured using analogs of methyl benzoate. And so that's kind of like a cool thing to show, uh, to give an introductory exposure to structure activity relationship and the differences between different individuals. So uh, it's a really cool demonstration. And if you guys are interested at some point on this channel, I could do a video where we get a bunch of different people to compare the smells of different uh, analogs of the same compound. Cause I think that would be kind of an interesting thing to see. And it would really highlight uh, like what medicinal chemistry does, but in this case in like a more perfume related uh, application. So I think benzoates are pretty good. Now I wouldn't say that like they're the best ever. So I'd probably just put them in B tier. 
Okay, secondary amines. You have two different classes of uh, smells for amines. Why don't we work our way through all of these amines? So amines either smell fishy or they smell like dirty gym shorts. That's kind of it. They, they can also just smell bad in different ways. Like to me, triethylamine has this other whole kind of bad that doesn't quite get summed up by fishy. It's like fishy and it's kind of like a spicy attack your throat feeling, but not in a good way at all. Like just, just bad. Like I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even describe it other than like the smell of triethylamine. Um, so secondary means that I've worked with tend to have more of the like gym short smell where tertiary means can go either way, either fishy or gym shorts or kind of both. So they definitely are going to go into F tier. Now, primary means, I don't think I've personally worked with too, too many primary amines, but when I have, they've been relatively volatile and smelled fishy as well. So for that reason, we're going to put them into F tier. Okay, esters. Esters are an easy S tier. Esters are like the flavor of almost everything. Not quite everything, but pretty darn close. Now, there are exceptions. So certain esters are more associated with unpleasant smells, but... Most of the flavors that you get in like fermentation, for instance, come from esters. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So esters are at least S tier, maybe A tier. Now cyclohexane derivatives are another really, really good smelling uh, class of compounds, kind of like terbutyl, except these ones tend to smell fruity. In my uh, five best smelling chemicals that I've made video, I talk about uh, this CF2O uh, cyclohexane compound, which smelled like the best thing I've ever smelled, like candy on steroids. Now, I've also made a lot of ester analogs of cyclohexanes, and I would just say in general, like, if you smell terbutyl cyclohexane, it's, like, decent, too. Now, you might attribute all those good smells to the terbutyl or the difluoromethyl or the the presence of esters, but I think cyclohexanes themselves have a lot going for them, and so I think they probably belong in A tier at least. Now, speaking of difluoromethyl, uh, have we already covered difluoromethyl? No, we haven't. So difluoromethyl compounds tend to be really sweet-smelling and pleasant, uh, I think easy S tier. I kind of just talked through why, so I'll just put it in S tier without going into too much more detail. Now, aryl bromides. You might not have smelled aryl bromides before, but certain ones smell really good. Um, I'm not encouraging you to smell aryl bromides because they're probably not that good to smell. So this would be like a forbidden fruit kind of good smell. Um, you know, like I think of four bromobenzyl bromide or four bromobenzyl alcohol. While one of them's a benzylic alcohol, it's a little bit biased. They, they don't smell like get away from me. This is bad. They smell like, Ooh, that's kind of nice. That's kind of got a nice sweet smell to it, but there are exceptions where they just smell like mega cancer. And so that because some of them smell like cancer, cancer starts with a C. So we're going to put it into C tier. Now thiols F tier. If we're, we're going to actually cover up the F of F tier with thiols because F thiols, they smell so bad. They're additives for natural gas so that you don't, so that, you know, when there's like a gas leak, if you like go near a sewage plant, they just smell like awful, awful thiols, you know, frighten people. Do you know how many times people came to the lab and asked if I was working with sulfur stuff because I was working with sulfur stuff sometimes all the time. And, and we worked kind of near a, a swamp that had like a really bad smell. People came to my lab all the time complaining about sulfur stuff. So thiols can cover the F of F tier because thiols are the worst smelling compounds. Okay. Aryl iodides. Now, to me, aryl iodides smell like cancer. Now, they don't necessarily smell bad, but they definitely don't smell good. If you smell iodobenzene, it's unique, but it's bad. It, I can't really describe it other than like somewhat nauseating and unpleasant, and it's just not the type of thing you really want to ever smell. And, and if there's a little bit of it left in your product, if you're ever trying to remove it, you can usually tell if it's there. So aryl iodides probably going to go into D tier. Actually, because we were saying thionoesters are still kind of good, we put them in D tier, but we, but because they're like in the same tier as like old people's, so we can put them there. I mean, I feel like we've been a little bit too harsh on ethers. I think maybe ethers can go up to C tier. Okay. Let's just uh, clean some of this up and then we can get going. Okay. Orthoesters. So some orthoesters smell better than others. Some people in the discord were claiming that methyl orthoesters smell better than ethyl ones. Originally, I was just going to talk about ethyl ones, because in my opinion, triethyl orthoacetate is an amazing compound that smells like popcorn. Um, one of my friends uh, described the smell of triethyl orthoacetate as it smells more like popcorn than popcorn does, which I thought was apt. 
Um, however, I am not too much of a fan of the trimethyl orthoesters. Now, you probably don't want to be smelling these too much because they're probably going to react with stuff in you. But, uh, you know, they, they have a place. I don't know if they necessarily have a place in uh, perfumery. If you think that they do, let me know down below. But otherwise, I'm going to put them in C tier. Now, aryl methyl ethers. This is another really good smelling functional group. Uh, I frequently walk past certain white flowers in my neighborhood, and they have this exact, like, 4-methyl benzyl alcohol or 4, or sorry, 4-methoxy benzyl alcohol or 4-methoxy benzaldehyde, like anisaldehyde smell. And it's like a pleasant one. Uh, I'd say aryl, aryl methyl ethers, whenever I've made analogs, they've tended to smell pretty good. I developed a reagent uh, right near the end of my grad studies here that uh, has two methoxy groups on it, and it smells great. Like, it's a really good smelling reagent. Uh, kind of no matter what's bound to it, still got, like, a decent kick to it. I would say aryl methyl ethers probably belong in A tier because they're just so pleasant. Now, phenols are a controversial one because I personally really like the smell of phenols, but they don't smell like, wow, I want to cover myself in this or I want to smell this all the time. It's like, that's kind of a nice bit of variety. That's kind of interesting. But some people hate the smell of phenols, like, ew, medicine, unpleasant, don't want to smell anymore. So I think for that reason, phenols have to go in D tier. But if you disagree, you can let me know down in the comments. Now, allyl arenes, allyl benzenes. We talked about allyl benzenes in the spice video because we season our food with allyl benzenes. Like, these are the spices. Yes, there are other ones, but they're like amongst the most common motifs in how we season our food. I think if I put allyl arenes anywhere other than... Uh, S tier, some people would complain. However, there's, there are some that are kind of overwhelming if you have too much of them. So because you can season your food as much or as little as you want, you can put in just the appropriate amount, and maybe the appropriate amount is zero. I think owl arenes belong in S tier. You can let me know what you think down below. Nitro arenes. Nitro arenes can smell like uh, benzonitriles a little bit. I have a bit of that like benzaldehyde smell to them, except they're really, really toxic, and you should absolutely not be smelling nitrobenzene. I would say that... As a rule, they aren't always good smelling, but there are exceptions where they can be good smelling. I have worked with a handful of them, and the smells have been like neutral to bad in most cases. So for that reason, I think we're going to have to put them in D tier. Now, thiobenzophenones probably actually belong in F tier as well. I mean, like they're not as bad as thioketones, but they're still so bad that you don't ever really want to smell them. So maybe we maybe we can put nitroarenes in E tier. Okay, phosphines and phosphites. So phosphines have a unique smell and so do phosphites. It's kind of really hard to compare them to anything other than plasticky and phosphiny. Now, phosphites have a little bit of something else going on, kind of like a spicy phosphorus smell. I would consider these to be very bad and unpleasant, but some people consider them to be sweet. I think best case scenario, phosphites go in D tier. Phosphines are more neutral, but they're not like good. Some people think that they smell good, but I, I would have to strongly disagree. And I'm going to put this right into D tier. We had a phosphine cabinet in our lab. And if you opened it, it was never a pleasant experience, but it wasn't like you feel like you're going to die. It was just like, yuck, bad, not good. Okay, so we got about 10 or so left here. Why don't we talk about sulfonyl chlorides? So I, I really hate the smell of sulfonyl chlorides. If someone's weighed out some tosyl chloride on a scale, I can smell that tosyl chloride for usually at least a month. And uh, occasionally, if I'm ever walking around somewhere and I smell what smells like tosyl chloride, I'm really concerned because I don't know why there would be sulfonyl chlorides outside, outside of the research lab. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a smell that I occasionally come across. So it's not a, not a pleasant smell at all. Uh, it's distinct from HCl. HCl has a very distinct, like, you burp on an empty stomach smell. That's the smell of HCl, in my opinion. Uh, and I would say that neither the sulfonyl chlorides or the acyl chlorides have that same smell. They have a little bit of overlap, but they have a distinct smell. So I would say sulfonyl chlorides are acrid, unpleasant, suffocating, and they make you want to get out of the area. I'm putting them in F tier. Acyl chlorides and benzoyl chlorides are also bad. Acyl chlorides have more of a relation to like HCl and like suffocating, nauseating a little bit, but benzoyl chlorides linger more. And so they might be less intense in the short term, uh, but they're going to be present for a lot longer. So the acyl chlorides are like stronger, more concentrated, but then they're gone. But the benzoyl chlorides and the tosyl chlorides, they tend to like stick around a little bit more. Now, secondary amides are pretty neutral. Like they're not really good. 
they have like a slight fishiness to them, but that might just be due to trace impurities. But if we compare that with the thioamides, the thioamides smell like nowhere near as bad as thioketones. They smell worse than thionoesters or dithioesters, but they smell like death a little bit. So because they smell like death, I think we're going to have to put them in E tier. However, death does start with an E. You know, we haven't decided what we're doing with D tier this time in the last uh, tier list video, which I'll include a link to here, where uh, where we had ranked uh, some various stuff. We, uh, we had used D as drug tier for reducing agents, uh, but in this case, we haven't really defined what D tier is this time. Now, I think because thioamides are going into uh, E tier, we're going to have to put amides in D tier. They're not really good, but you don't really want to smell them. Isocyanates, another really suffocating, unpleasant one. Isocyanates are really bad. They kind of smell like acyl chlorides, but it's not really clear to me why that is, unless it's like reacting with some sort of receptor. Carbodiamide, similar. Uh, like nauseating, penetrating, and surprisingly volatile. They also smell like death. They can go into F tier. Ureas. Ureas depend a little bit, because if you think of urea, you might think of the smell of urine. It's unpleasant. If you've worked with urea in the lab before, it's unpleasant. However, some of the substituted analogs can be a little bit sweet. So I've made diphenyl urea, like 1,3-diphenylurea and just 1-phenylurea. They don't smell that bad. They smell a little bit plasticky, like a plasticizer, but, you know, like, not the worst. I think they could probably go in C tier. Like, they're they're, they're not that bad. Um, they're probably better than secondary amides, so I think I'll put them in C tier. Now, carboxylic acids are controversial, okay? Carboxylic acids are the smell of butyric acid, the smell of cheeses, but they're also the smell of, like, feet, or, like, if we have something like pivolic acid, people describe this as the smell of something like garbage or an unclean bottom. So carboxylic acids usually associate themselves with being dirty and unclean. And so we're going to put them in E tier. Although I will admit, I do like the smell of cheese, depending on the smell. Now ketones, last but not least, ketones are somewhere between good and bad. I like the smell of acetone in small amounts. However, you also have stuff like butane dione, which is the smell of microwave popcorn, which some people like, some people don't. There's also methyl ethyl ketone, which just smells like cars or you're working on cars, right? It's got that very distinct smell to it. So I think ketones could be worse, but they're not that bad. Ketones can probably go in B tier. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of ranking all of the different functional groups by their smell. It would really help out this channel if you left a like and subscribed. And I hope you have a great day.